Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas. Our ongoing study in the book of Revelation by the Apostle John. We're going to take a look at final judgment. We're going to take a look at uh, chapter 20, 7 through 12. And now that we're at the, uh, the end of the book of Revelation, we're going to be looking at how this information here, this vision, stacks on top of previous visions. The book of Revelation is not one long chronology. Basically, chapters 1 through 7 give the reader the form of the Revelation. Then chapters 8 through 22 fill in specific content. So 1 through 7, chapters 1 through 7, give you the structure of the vision. And then through various other visions, John fills in specific content. So now that we're toward the end of the book of Revelation, all three moments, all three blocks are going to have stacked visions. But the theme is going to be final judgment. Let's begin with block one and take a look at verses seven and eight. In seven we read, and when the thousand years are ended, Satan shall be loosed out of the, his prison. The announcement in verse, verses 1 through 6 on binding Satan and the millennium is followed by details of the final judgment. And in verse 8, we continue with those details. And he shall go out to deceive the nations from the four quarters of the earth with Gog and Magog to gather them to do battle their number being as the sand of the sea. So now Satan resumes his role of deception, but in addition to deception, there is a gathering together of all those who will oppose the community of faith. Verse 9 tells us this is a surrounding of the camp of the saints. John sees the fulfillment of Ezekiel 38 and 39 in this vision. When the nations gathered together to oppose Israel, now John applies this to the end of days and the opposition toward the church. And if you take a look at Ezekiel 38, 18, it shall come to pass at the time of the latter days, Gog shall come against the land of Israel my fury shall come up in my face. And then Ezekiel 39, 7, I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people. I will not let them pollute my holy name. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord and the Holy One. And then you can cross-reference Zephaniah. That's right, we actually have a quote from Zephaniah 3, 8. My determination is to gather the nations and assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, my anger, and my jealousy. And then good old Zechariah 14, 2 and 3. I will gather the nations against Jerusalem, but the remnant shall not be cut off. I will fight against the nations, as in the final day of battle. <laughs> so obviously, John sees the fulfillment of Ezekiel and Zechariah as occurring in this vision. It is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Ezekiel, the end of days prophecy from Ezekiel. But these are stacked visions. We're at the end of the book, so we've got previous references. Take a look at note three. Remember the book of Revelation is a series of stacked visions. In this case there are, they are 11.7, 16, 14, 19, 19, and 28. In 11, 7, the church's prophetic role is opposed by the beast ascending out of the pit. In 16, we have the fifth, the sixth bowl of wrath and Armageddon. And then remember, after the 1,000 years, the second resurrection unto damnation takes place. So are resurrected non-believers present at this time? That's a possibility. And finally, rabbinic literature identified Gog as 
Edom or Rome. And this would be precisely John's point of view in the first century. He would view Rome as New Babylon. We've discussed it in all the previous lessons for John. Rome is New Babylon, especially in Rome's role in Asia Minor. In the persecution of the church, they are in persecution of the new Israel, the new Jerusalem, the church, they are new Babylon. So in 7 and 8 we have the beast and the false prophet gathering forces to oppose the community of faith, to oppose the church in an attempt to completely destroy the church. But Christ is going to intervene in verses 9 and 10. So let's move over to block 2. And we read in verse 9, And they went up over the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. Again, Ezekiel 38, we're going to be camping out in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 38, 22, I will enter into judgment against him with pestilence, I will rain upon him with hailstones, with fire, and with brimstone. In Ezekiel, it is Israel as a city that is attacked. In the Old Testament, Babylon is described as going forth on the plain of the earth against Israel. The Babylonian episode foreshadows the end of days eschatological event for John. The camp of the saints represents the encampment of the Israel's tribes around the tabernacle in the wilderness of the Exodus. Remember, the theme of Revelation is New Exodus. And so that image of the tribes camping around the tabernacle represents the church in John's time with Jesus Christ as he who dwells with the church as the kafale head in the center of that gathering. Now the beloved city is representative of what will be shown in Revelation 21.2. I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from heaven as a bride adorned. adorned. In other words, it is the community of faith. And then we can especially cross-reference 2 Kings 1.12, where God protects the prophet Elijah. And that is used by John because of the prophetic role of the church in the latter days. Remember, the church takes on the role of those who will interpret events for others so that they understand this is the judgment of God, the one true God and the true Messiah, Jesus Christ. The church takes on the role of Latter-day Prophet. And this reference to Elijah reads, If I be a man of God, let fire come down and consume you and your fifty. And fire came down and consumed him and the fifty. So it's, again, it's an image of judgment as fire. And we've seen that many times in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, fire is the metaphor for judgment. Now in verse 10, we read, And the devil that deceived was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and are tormented day and night forever. And the Greek verb is basanizo, to torment in waves, so it's wave after wave of torment. The devil is cast together with the beast and the false prophet. Again, we're at the end of the book. It's definitely going to stack over other verses. This verse should be stacked with Revelation 19.20. These both were cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. That's the, the beast and the false prophet. It is possible that eternal torment could be symbolic for permanent removal, or it could be literal. And then we can take a look at a cross-reference in Matthew 25:41. Depart from me, you cursed ones, unto everlasting fire that has been prepared for the devil and his angels. The lake of fire is not literal, obviously. Since Satan and his angels are spiritual beings, punishment is spiritual in nature. And it refers to the unending period of God's reign from which they will be expelled. And that is punishment, separation from God forever. That is 
absolute final judgment and punishment beyond any punishment imaginable separation from God forever in a premillennial view Satan the beast and the false prophet are thrown into the lake of fire prior to the thousand year reign they will suffer the second death I do take up a premillennial view uh, my own personal view and like I said I, I believe that a person should take a stance I'm not dogmatic on it but I, I do have a stance of post trib premillennial from what I've learned in the book of Revelation the church will go through the tribulation the church will not go through the bowls of wrath but the second coming will precede the thousand year reign of Christ on earth with the saints who also will share thrones so my view my position thus far after studying 20 chapters of the book of Revelation is post trib premillennial I believe the church will go through the trumpets of tribulation not the bowls of wrath and then at the second coming the thousand year reign will be inaugurated let's move on to block three and take a look at final judgment that's what this lesson is all about let's take a look at the final two verses here 11 and 12 in verse 11, 11 we read and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face heaven and earth fled away and there was no place for them again we're going to stack visions we're at the end of the book we're going to stack 4 2 and 5 7 with 2011 in 4 2 we have a throne was set in heaven and 5 7 we have he took the scroll and sat upon the throne referring to Christ a cross-reference Daniel 7 9 and Ezekiel 1 26 there's your Babylonian prophets in Daniel 7 9 the ancient of days did sit upon the throne a throne like a fiery flame there you go it's a throne of judgment Ezekiel 1 26 the likeness of a throne and a man above upon it with fire round about it again the throne of final judgment this is the consummate judgment toward which all the other judgments have pointed throughout the book of Revelation God as the ancient of days sits on the throne but we know that both God and Christ execute judgment because Christ is at the right hand remember he hides in the right hand of the Father they both execute judgment and then here's your key concluding verse 12 and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things written in the books according to their works Crino is to judge it's used as aorist indicative passive the two resurrections of John 529 take place here remember in Revelation 5 6 Christ stood before the throne the lamb stood before the throne which signified resurrection we can take a look at Daniel 7 10 10,000 by 10,000 stood before him and judgment was set and the books were opened there's your metaphor of the books and then Daniel 12 1 thy people shall be delivered everyone found written in the book of life remember Revelation 11 18 tells us that the final judgment is a two-edged sword it includes judgment and redemption it includes reward for the Saints and destruction for the ungodly we've had that that recognition has been a part of uh, many of our recent lessons the double harvest idea it is the theme of New Exodus but the second coming of Christ is a coming in judgment and redemption it is a twofold second coming Christ comes in judgment Christ comes in redemption there will be a resurrection unto life there will be a resurrection unto damnation but we get the final judgment lesson here that's a very important lesson a very critical lesson actually it gives us the beast gathering up forces to oppose the community of faith and we see that 
John relies heavily on the end of days prophecies from Ezekiel. But he does take up Zechariah and believe it or not, even Zephaniah. I haven't had any reference to Zephaniah recently, so that's even Zephaniah he took up three eight. It spoke it was an apocalyptic writing about the gathering of the nations to assemble the kingdoms, but the promise that God will pour upon them indignation, anger, and jealousy. And we saw stacked visions in block one. We saw stacked visions. And they were actually one, two, four of them total. 11, 7, 16, 14, 19, 19, and then this verse 28. So it was a we're looking at the way that the book of Revelation works. John had a series of visions, but the first seven chapters give the reader the entire structure and form of the revelation that John has received. From chapter 8 to chapter 22, we get the specific content to fill out that chapter 1 through 7 form. So basically, if you've got the first seven chapters down, you've got the form of the vision, you've got the structure of the vision, then John fills it out with specific trumpets, specific bowls, and now specific judgment, final judgment. But that's the way the book of Revelation has to be looked at. It is not one long chronology, not at all. That's the wrong way to look at it. You have the entire structure given, then you have specific content visions given to fill it out, and that's why now toward the end of the book, every block here has stacked verses, because in block two, the execution of judgment with fire also has stacked verses and references to previous visions. But uh, I did give you my opinion in block two. I think it's important to at least take a stand, not just ride the fence. I do take up a post-trib pre-millennial view from my study of Revelation through 20 chapters. I see the church going through the trumpets of tribulation because they are to be the take up the prophetic role, the prophet who interprets events for the world to let them know this is divine judgment. Turn to Christ. This is God's divine judgment. I don't believe the church is going to suffer the wrath of God, so I don't believe that the church goes through the bowls of wrath. And then there is a second coming, and the second coming, I believe, is prior to the thousand-year reign. So it's, I believe, in a pre Millennial second coming. It's prior to the thousand year reign. And I do believe that those who sit on the thrones are all of the saints. All of the saints sit on the thrones during the thousand year reign. But it's all going to lead up to, and we got that last lesson, but that key verse in the Gospel of John, John 5 29, very critical verse. I mean, to tie in with uh, these final lessons in the book of Revelation, there are going to be there are going to be two resurrections: the resurrection unto life, just prior to the thousand-year reign, and then after the thousand-year reign, the resurrection unto damnation. And then after that resurrection, all will stand before the throne of judgment. The great white throne in block three. And so it's a critical lesson, but I think we are really pulling together the way that we can understand Revelation as a series of visions that are stacked. Chapters one through seven give the form of the vision, the overall structure, 
of the vision given to John, chapters 8 through 22, fill in specific content. That's going to wrap up chapter 27 through 12. Believe it or not, next lesson is only going to be three verses. It's going to be 13, 14, and 15 of chapter 20. We'll wrap up chapter 20 next time, but it's only going to be three verses next time, so it's going to be a very short, but it will be a comprehensive closeout of chapter 20 next time. So we'll pick up next time with 2013.